Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Another Set of Eyes with today's Excel Bytes blog post. Today we're going to take a look at the offset function and using it to create a data range and convert a data range into a column. And we're going to end up using seven different functions to accomplish this. So this one's going to get a little complicated. And I'll try to go slow and hopefully I'll be succinct enough to explain how I accomplish this. Basically what I want to do here is show you how I used offset and show you how also how I use the other functions in Excel in combination with offset and maybe offset will be useful to you maybe just using some of the individual components of this might be useful to you in other functions or other formulas that you're trying to build so let's see how this goes and hopefully I'll be able to uh, make it easy to understand so here's the general concept here. We have this data range here that is um, six columns wide by five columns tall. And what I want to do is create a formula so that I can start here in cell A1, drag it down, and put this into one single column. And this will only work in the case of how I structured it if all your columns are the same height. If you have varying column heights, uh, variations are going to need to be made to that, which I'm not going to address here. So this is all based on the fact you have the same number of items in each of your columns. And also, you don't have anything below your columns here. I'll show you how you can accommodate that if you do. But for right now, I've structured this so that uh, there's nothing below it, and it will create this column here. So let's take, it to look, let's take a look at the different uh, functions that we're going to use. The main one is offset. And if we look at offset here, offset returns a reference to a range that is a given number of rows and columns from a given reference. So if you look at the syntax, you take a reference or your starting point, and you go so many rows down, so many columns over, and then once you've achieved that spot, how tall and how wide do you want that area to be? Now in our case, you can see height and width here are in square brackets, which means they're optional, because by default, Excel assumes one uh, row high, one column wide, and if that's the case, which is what our case is here, you don't need to enter those aspects of the, uh, of the function. So all we're going to worry about is our reference, how many rows down and how many columns over we're going from that reference to grab the information in that cell. So um, here's basically the syntax. Again, reference, rows, columns, and then these uh, the number of rows and number of columns in our scenario is uh, uh, are defaulted to one, so we don't have to include those. So here's our formula: the uh, equals offset e1, which is the state point. That's our starting point for all our formulas, and uh, that we uh, copy down. We're going to use that as our starting point and determine. Every time I drag the cell down, how many rows down we're going to go, how many columns over we're going to go. This area here pretty much lays out what the in internals of the um, offset function are going to be. So in this case, to get to AA, we're going to start at E1, go zero rows down, zero columns over. To get to BB, we're going to start at E1, we're going to go one row down, zero columns over. To get to XX, which is here, we're going to start at E1, which is there, go three rows down, start there, one, two, three, and then go four columns over, one, two, three, four. So E1, three, four is going to give us the results for XX. So even to show how that works, if I inserted the offset function here and closed it up there, you'll see the result is XX. So E134 is XX. So what's the pattern here? You can see my pattern is always E1. So if you can see my formula here, I've put E1 as my reference point, And I made it an absolute cell reference with the dollar signs there uh, so that that never changes. And then notice how my 
a row reference goes from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And my column reference is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, etc. So 0, 1, 1, I'm sorry, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, 0, etc. So you can see the pattern that we needed to establish when we dragged our, our formula down. So let's see how that works. So to get that first character there, the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, we used a combination of the mod, row, and count of functions. So I'm just going to take and copy this over to this cell here. And I'm going to go ahead and show the formula there. And if I copy this down, you'll see that I get my 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, just like I need for my uh, row reference in my offset function. So let's see how that worked. What does the mod function do? The mod function returns the remainder after the division. And the syntax is a number and a divisor. So if we look at equals mod, returns the remainder after a number is divided by a divisor and you have your number and your divisor. So if we take a look at this, what we did was we used the row number as our number and we used the count of function, how many items we have in our column as um, what we're going to do, that's our divisor, and what this is going to return is the remainder. So let's take a look at what happens here. Row A1 is, that's going to return a number 1. So if I take a look at that, highlight that, hit F9, it's going to tell me row 1 will return 1. I subtract 1 from that to get 0. And then when I divide 0 by my counta, now what's my counta? Counta is column E. That's going to be 5. So if I take 0 divided by 5, I get 0 and there's no remainder. If I go down to the next one, row A2, that gives me a 2, minus 1 is 1, divided by 5 is 0 with a remainder of 1. If I take A3, which will be 3, because uh, that's what tells me what the row reference is, so I'm in 3 minus 1 is 2, divided by 5 is 0 with a remainder of 2, and so on, remainder of 3, remainder of 4. If I get down here to row KK, Let's see what happens there. I'm in row A11, so what does that return? That returns an 11. Minus 1 is 10. 10 divided by 5 is 2, and what's my remainder? 0. So by doing this and looking for the remainder, it'll give, always give me 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way down, which solves my reference to the row in my offset function. Okay, now let's look and see how we did the columns. The columns, we used a combination of roundup, not row, but rows, and again, the count of function. So we're going to take that, we're going to put it here, we're going to paste that in there, and we're going to put the equal sign in front to make it into a formula. And if I copy that down, you'll see I have 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2 etc., which is what I want the second part of my reference to be um, in my offset function. So let's see how that worked. Here, we took the rows function. And what does the rows function do? The rows function, if we take equals rows, it returns the number of rows in a reference or an array. And it just can say, what's your array? So in our case, in any one of these, our array is starting at row A1 and going to whatever um, row I'm referencing to. So A1 to A1, that's going to be 1. A1 to A2 is going to be 2. A1 to A3 is going to be 3. So in this case, if I look at the result of the rows function here, it's going to return a 3. Okay. So if I take that 3 and divide it by my 5, I get a number less than 1. And that's where we use the roundup function. So anytime I take any one of these and divide it by 5, um, and then create that to an integer, and let's look at the roundup function, what that does. Equals roundup, rounds a number up away from 0. 
So what's the syntax? The syntax is what's my number and then what's the number of digits? So as you can see in my roundup function, uh, ultimately I use zero as the number of digits. I just want a single integer, uh, no decimal places. So again, let's see what, what happens here. We take our number of rows, in this case in the very first one, that would be one row, divided by my count there, which is five, so that gives me a point two, and round it up, that gives me a one. Subtract one from that, I get a zero. That'll be the case all the way to here, which again, if I have five rows divided by five, that gives me a one, to, and round it up, that gives me still a one. Subtract one from that, I get a zero. If I'm down here in row 17, a1 to A17 is going to give me 17. Divide by 5, that's going to give me 3.4. And uh, round that up to the nearest integer, that gives me 4. Subtract 1, I get 3. So in each one of these, I'm going to get my result of 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2 etc. by using the number of rows in that array divided by my number of uh, items in my column, round it up to a single integer and subtracting one, that'll give me the second part of my component here, the 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, etc. So again, using the offset function, always starting at a specific point, determining how many rows down, how many columns over to get to the result that I want and in order for the rows to get the answer I want we use the combination of mod row and the counter function to get to the columns we use roundup rows not row but rows and the counter function and again the last two components of the offset function, the number of rows and number of columns are optional. They automatically default to one so we can actually ignore those in the offset function. And again, here is the ultimate formula that we came up with. Offset, mod, row, counter, round up rows, and counter again. And there you have it. Pretty complicated, but uh, I think if you break it down piece by piece, it works out and makes it a little more understandable. I hope you liked it. I hope it's worthwhile to you, and I hope you can use either all of it or some component of it. If you'd like to see more, love to see it at my website, excel-bytes.com, and I hope you subscribe. Happy excelling.